Thanks for clicking. One third of Canadians regret their current mortgage. This according to a new survey from the Real Estate and Mortgage Institute of Canada, REMIC. That's not good to think about that now. Indeed, Bloomberg reported on the story, noting that the Bank of Canada first told Canadians that rates would stay low for a long time in July of 2020. Recall the Bank of Canada governor said back in July 2020 that interest rates were going to stay low for a long time, saying our message to Canadians is that interest rates are very low and they're going to be there for a long time. Yet, while REMIC President Joe White says that the survey reveals Canadians need to educate themselves on the basics on taking on a mortgage, a deeper look into the report and the media shows that it's not only Canadians that could use a better education. So what I want to do today is go over the report, taking a look at how it's being discussed in the media, go over what happened when the Bank of Canada said that rates would stay low for a long time, and then discuss what to look for next. Speaking of next, the end of the month is fast approaching, and with that, we're expecting the release of August real estate data from the local boards, as well as the Bank of Canada's interest rate announcement coming up on September 6th. We'll obviously have an update out on both on this channel. Click like and subscribe if you want to get those updates. But for now, let's get into the survey. Under the survey, as mentioned, the report found that 34.1% of Canadians regret taking on the mortgage that they currently have. 21.8% of respondents saying that the Bank of Canada's rate hikes have made their mortgages unaffordable. Yet it's not so much the property or the price that Canadians are regretting, with only 30.21% saying they would not have purchased if they knew mortgage rates were going to go up. So the survey is pointing to the idea that the majority of Canadians who took on variable rates a few years ago, back when interest rates were near zero, are now regretting it. Which is hardly a surprise given the magnitude of articles we've seen about homeowners seeing their payment rise, seeing their mortgage payment rise astronomically over the course of the past few years. I need a name. So, according to the survey, Canadians regret taking on variable rate mortgages, which isn't a surprise, and the real estate industry is advising that Canadians need to educate themselves on the basics of taking on a mortgage. That's what I pay you for. And yeah, judging from the report, judging from the number of articles showing the stresses on Canadians who have variable rate mortgages, Canadians could have very well used some guidance when taking on their mortgage. And on this, Remix President Joe White says that the banks share in some of the blame. Most consumers weren't aware of the risks involved with potential rate hikes uh, and, and the types of products they were getting. We couple that with the fact that over half got their mortgages from a bank. And one of the conclusions that we can draw is that the banks weren't doing a very adequate job at advising individuals of potential drawbacks and risks. And that is one way to interpret the data. Remick notes that 57% of consumers got their mortgages from banks. And as such, the risks of a variable rate mortgage maybe weren't explained as much as they would have been had those consumers have used a mortgage broker. But the data doesn't necessarily mean that variable rate mortgages were only being recommended by banks. According to FISRA, 40% of mortgages being taken out in 2020 were from that of a mortgage broker. So it makes sense that nearly 60% of respondents in this poll did in fact get their mortgages from banks rather than a mortgage broker. The data doesn't necessarily put the responsibility solely on the banks. Regardless, if sound advice, if proper guidance, if proper warnings weren't being provided by the financial industry, was it coming from the media? And the media does appear to be agreeing with the assessments coming from the survey, with multiple sources pointing to their regrets on the part of mortgage holders, saying that more education is indeed needed. But what was the guidance being provided to Canadians back when the Bank of Canada said rates would stay low for a long time? Ridiculous as that was, given that the money supply was growing at its fastest rate on record, and over 2 million people had stopped producing things, just here in Canada. The Financial Post, arguably one of the sources where Canadians could have accessed financial news, access financial guidance, called it the golden age of borrowing, noting that you could get a tremendous interest rate on a personal loan and that mortgage rates have never been lower. The only mention of inflation in that entire article was that the Bank of Canada said that rates would remain low until Canada had returned to its 2% target. Bloomberg went a little bit further, parodying the Bank of Canada's assessment that inflation would be 1.7% in 2023. Bloomberg did note that the central bank was injecting hundreds of billions of dollars into the financial system, but falled short of explaining what that could mean for the inflation rate. 
You'll know that when you need to know that. Indeed. So when this announcement was made, when the central bank said that it would be keeping rates low for a long time, the excuse being used by advisors countrywide, lame as it is, Canada's two main sources of financial news had very little to say about what the increase in the money supply could do to Canada's inflation rate or on interest rates. And it's not like they didn't know. This wasn't a surprise. Prior to the pandemic, the Financial Post had written a scathing article noting that we can't just print loads of cash without consequences. And Bloomberg also ran multiple articles about how the increase in the money supply in Argentina had led to runaway inflation. And looking to these articles as a demonstration that these news networks knew full well what the risks to the inflation rate were going forward is charitable at best. As I think anyone with any basic financial training, any financial training, any training in economics knows that an increase in the money supply without an increase in production equals inflation. The link between the money supply and the inflation rate has been known since at least Roman times, back when they used to shave parts of their coins off, melt those parts down, and create new coins. Old school. Which led, 2,000 years ago, to runaway inflation. The Federal Reserve actually has a lesson plan on its website on how to teach this to kids in high school. You better make a go of it, that new school. You got no idea what we had to do to get you in there. There is no reason you shouldn't be able Similar methods of coin clipping and the inflation that resulted thereafter have happened in history over and over and over again, which we don't need to go into here. So, while Remick, while the real estate industry says that the average borrower needs to better educate themselves about mortgages and how rates work, it's not clear that these financial news networks know how they work either. And if they did, they certainly weren't providing that guidance to the average Canadian. Or, as Bloomberg puts it, Now, whether the central bank governor regrets his low for long guidance way back when, that's a whole other question. And no, I don't think Governor Tiff Macklin regrets it at all. The Bank of Canada was clear that they were leaning on real estate to get the Canadian economy through the pandemic. And when those in the know, those who did know or should have known better, took the bank at their word, real estate did indeed do the heavy lifting. For Bloomberg to put the entirety of the blame on the Bank of Canada, when Bloomberg should have known better, it's a little galling. And if they did know, if our financial news networks did know that we should expect inflation when the Bank of Canada was printing billions and chose not to cover it, chose not to pass that on to the average consumer, then it's a little rich to blame that consumer now for not knowing. With that said, we will continue to track Canada's real estate market and the Bank of Canada on this channel. Click like and subscribe if you want to get those updates. But for now, thanks so much for watching.